Hello and good morning or good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is an overcast day here, pretty cold in Cologne. It's winter after all. And um, we will place things now on other things. And we use the MASH network here. MASH is under FX and here, MASH. You have this slim menu set here. But you also have MASH here in the distribution uh, on top of the Maya window here, especially this icon here. And in order to place something on another thing, we need two objects. And we go to Polygon Modeling and uh, place a cone on the, on the ground and it penetrates the ground. And for placing things on top of other things, it's important to place them properly. And uh, this penetration of the ground is something we want to get rid of. In this case, we go to the front window or side window and we move the thing up like this. I can use the key X, I press and hold it so it snaps to the grid like this. And I'll let it sit here. That doesn't do much, I think. We need to press insert to get the pivot. And the pivot uh, can be handled in the same way. I press and hold X and move the pivot down here and press insert again. So I'm back in the ordinary transform mode. And if I wanted to scale it now, which I actually want to, I scale it from the bottom, which is just something I want. That's a nice thing. When you do manipulations like these, which are fundamental to the geometry, to the basic geometry, don't forget to go to modify and freeze transformations. It means uh, you telling Maya from now on this object is made like this and behaves like this and not like it was made in the um, in the first instance. So we have the cone now. Now we need something to place the cone on and we can well pick a torus and the torus is a little bit too thick for me now. Uh, so I that's what it looks like now. So I stretch it a little bit. The section radius can be a little bit bigger and the twist doesn't uh, matter. I make it a little bit more round and fewer subdivisions in this um, a, um, direction. And now I'm basically ready to go. I want to place several of these things on the torus and do it interactively. That's the purpose of this command, which we'll see in a second. So I pick this um, cone, I go to mesh, and I create a mesh network from it. So I get 10 samples now. The waiter, as it says, has 10 of them. And I go to distribute, and for the first time ever, I think, I've never done that before, I type in the number 0 here meaning I don't see them anymore, but they'll appear in a second. Go to MASH and now we have the placer here. It shows a pen with interactive, with a line sort of, add placer node. So now we have a placer node in place <clears throat> and it doesn't do anything here. Uh, and you can't select anything here. Um, it works just like this and only like this. You have to select one of these icons here. So wherever you are, say, in the Taurus Attribute Editor, you can't do any placing of whatevers. And you go to the Mesh and then you need to go to the Placer and pick, for example, that plus painting icon. That's what I'm doing now. Drag over a model to begin painting was the notification I got. And that's what I'm doing now. So I'm painting the cones on uh, the torus, like so. In order to make them a little bit more pleasingly looking, I go back to the mesh network here and I add a color node, which is right here. So they all turn white. I reduce the 
intensity of the color a little bit and go maybe to a blue greenish tint and now I can randomize the hue slightly and the saturation and the value. So now you see I have distributed the cones on the torus and they sit properly on the torus. They don't penetrate into the torus because I initially made that um, pivot change and froze the transformation. So that's important. If you hadn't done that, they would be uh, half of the cones would sit inside the torus. Uh, you have uh, the, the these gaps here, obviously, because they are too too big uh, for the and and this is a round surface they are going to place uh, they are being placed on. So uh, well, you just need to keep that in mind. For example, if you have make them smaller, they could adjust properly um, better to the surface they planted on. But the main problem here is that they penetrate each other. This one is overlapping with this one and that one. And you can get rid of that before painting uh, or after painting. So you click on Mash, you go to the Placer node, and then you press Collide. And um, you have a brush radius here. For example, you can make it bigger or by pressing and holding the key B while moving the left mouse button. This sounds too complicated. Um, and you move the mouse over here and then they're trying to find distance from each other. Which means in this case that they fly away from the torus. Which I think can be fixed, but I don't know how. Uh, it's a little bit odd, I think. Ian Waters probably will comment on this. But uh, the, anyway, they now separate from each other. But uh, as I said before, when you paint the things, you can go to Collide on Create and it's currently off. So uh, make it strict so they don't absolutely don't collide. Um, and paint again. And you see they keep a safe distance now. Make the brush a little bit smaller. So I can't paint here because they're already sitting here. That's the strict method here. Now I want to show you something uh, more in depth about the placer node. And uh, that is the following. Let's delete the mesh network. We keep the cone and we keep the torus. And we unhide the cone. It sits currently here. So let's duplicate the cone and duplicate it again like this and uh, we give the cones different colors now uh, assign new material Arnold shader standard surface shader and make this red or orange okay now I have three colors orange green and blue and I want to place the three of them on that torus okay um, I select them and go to Mesh Network and now I see only the first or last one I selected creates copies here. Uh, interesting enough the number is 3 now. Why is that? Never mind. We go to Distribute again and we don't want to see any of them. So we type in 0. Now we create a Placer node here. And when I paint, you remember you have to type add here. Now when you paint here, you get only the orange ones or brown ones. And that has to do, do with the ID, which is a key thing in MASH actually. The I, paint ID, the particles, the initial objects we're using for the mesh, mesh network have IDs. And this one, the brown uh, cone has the ID 0. So if I want to paint with the next one, I think that was the green one, I type in ID number 1. So we have 0 for brown, 
one for green and two for blue. If you have 20 several objects here, you can use the IDs here. You type in the IDs and then you paint with the IDs. So let me paint with the green one, which is ID, obviously ID number one, um, with the collisions on, uh, off actually. Uh, so let's use this here. And then I paint the green ones and they don't collide. They keep a safe distance from each other. So down here, the green. And I think I can paint them here as well. So they do keep a safe distance from the previous objects as well. Uh, when I type in 2 now, that's the third object in this case because we start from 0. Add and here I have the blue ones in a safe distance. Now you can randomize this and um, you randomize this by uh, changing the ID mode from fixed to random. Well, and you can random the ID from 0 to 0, which means when you paint you get only brown ones because you're randomizing only one number and that's the zero. But if you randomize from say one to two, you're asking Maya or Mash in this case to randomize between green and blue because this is green and this is blue. If you had 20 of them and you would type in from one to 20, it would randomize all your uh, objects without the zero. So I think we need to click here again. So it paints green and blue now. And they do collide. So we need to make a strict anti-collision thing here. Now it's more strict. That's, that's a slight difference here. So I'm painting blue and green now. And if I change this from 1 to 0, now I will get all of them. So I'm painting, here I have a little bit more space, blue and green and brown. Uh, there's a key shortcut M. If I press M, I can scale objects up like this. And I can rotate them, which doesn't make much sense here with cones, in fact. Plus, uh, strangely the cone all of a sudden uh, sits in another direction and I don't know how to handle that. I don't care anyway. Um, this is uh, something Ian Waters has to think about and explain to us. Uh, never mind, here you can delete the things. It's like an eraser. And uh, here you can collide the uh, anti-collide them and uh, here you can paint the IDs. And uh, basically that's what I wanted to show you. Oh, I forgot one thing. If you create another polygon object like, say, the cube here. Make the cube pretty big. If you want to paint on that cube, um, it's no problem. Go to the placer click add and then you paint here so it doesn't care really what you selected before it paints on the objects you're painting on your mouse is over um, and if you want to paint exclusively on one object for example only on this and not on this you can paint on this now uh, if you want to exclude this so to say you make an inclusion, you include this object here by uh, middle mouse dragging it in here. That's the mesh placer node here. We can actually try this. Uh, this is the polygon cube, middle mouse in here. Okay, now I can't place anything here on the torus. But I can place things on the cube.
Well, have a good day.